So I've been looking forward to this. I have been looking forward to Blackathon. I wasn't sure if we were gonna do it this year or how big it was gonna be this year because I know we've been through an intense 2020. So I was just like, I don't know. I feel like Jesse is not gonna want to do too much or maybe they might think like everybody might not want to do too much you know for black for black for blackathon and black history month and everything you know we might just take it easy so we might still do blackathon but it's gonna be a little bit more you know laid back a little bit more laid back and i love that they brought blackathon back and they brought it back even bigger and better than before like than the past few years we're having like more challenges more teams there's even more accessibility there's just more spread out like there's instagram youtube twitter challenges there's more and i'm so happy that blackathon is growing like this that there's just so much more to it so i appreciate that i definitely would have loved to have taken part in the other reading challenges and re other reading events for black history month like seji's um, I believe it's called the Black Lit Challenge and also Dee Dee's Read So Lit. I would have loved to have also taken part in those, but <laughs> I'll work. And I am being very responsible and reasonable with my TBRs, but I will also try to look into those challenges as well and see if anything that I'm reading, currently reading, will also be able to, I can integrate those into those other challenges, all those other reading events for Black History Month. At first, when I heard the theme was gonna be traveling, I'm like, do I have any books about traveling? Like, like actual physical traveling, but also like really taking a journey through your life or like a journey that's not necessarily like tangible. Like, do we, like, do I have anything like that? you know and most books are journeys they are a journey but I, I really definitely wanted a tangible journey initially from Jesse's announcement I was thinking like nah I'm not gonna commit to one to one team I'm definitely gonna like do as many prompts from different teams and all that take as much part in everything as I possibly can because I want to be a part of this so much I want to take part so much more than I have before I just really want to take full part in Blackathon this year but after looking through the prompts again I realized that you know I'm most likely gonna be on team SFF because like the most recent reads that I read were like literature and contemporary and very and memoirs and they were like a lot of them are close like pretty much close to serious close close to real life and I'm at a point where it's just like I just kind of want to escape a little bit more so I want like more science fiction fantasy let's get into another world i have been trying to finish how long till black future month because i started reading it last year with the black future book club and i'm enjoying that i can go into different worlds and experience different things different technologies different concepts and ideas and through nk jemison's like really amazing world building so i'm just I like I'm loving that so I'm looking forward to the books I'm going to read that are going to take me to another world and take me through different concepts and ideas and just like be exciting because after reading some of those like closer to real life stories I'm just like I need to take a break it's a little too serious it's a little too real for me right now I think I'm just not fully in that mode right now and we're just gonna have to take it out you know and on the note of Black Future Month I, last year, people were talking about, you know, because being that Juneteenth is in June, and people were talking about, like, how much Black History Month is such a short month, and we only got one month, and it's not enough to celebrate Blackness. It made me think, like, maybe June, as much as June is Pride Month, and as much as June, and the reason why we have Pride is because of a Black trans woman, I'm thinking that maybe June should be the second month that we celebrate Blackness, and it should be considered Black Future Month. I mean, I'm just putting it out there. Maybe whoever's the legislate legislators or whatever, I'm just putting it out into the world. Somebody's gonna pick it up and be like, you know what, you are right. Maybe June should be Pride, but also it should be Black Future Month. There are months that celebrate two different events and celebrate, I don't know, two different sets of things. Like there are days that celebrate two things at once where we talk about like the future of, of, of of blackness and seeing black people in the future like you know like what is the, what does the future look like for black people and celebrating ways that black people are innovating for our futures and the futures of 
humankind, please. Like, let's let's start having the discussion about a Black Future Month and make it in June to celebrate Juneteenth, you know, and, like, wrap all that up in there. It's going to be bursting with, like, Blackness. We're going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate Black history and Blackness in Kame, you know. We're going to do that. But let's have that discussion about June being Black Future Month while we also have Black History Month in February because we deserve period, okay? Period. And on the note of celebrating Blackness, I am wearing Black Magic. It has like little like, I don't know, confetti in the black. I'm wearing this in honor of Black History Month for Blackathon and all of it. So here's my TBR for what I will be reading for Blackathon and just Black History Month in, in general. We're going to start with the prompts for Team Science Fiction Fantasy Team SFF. Although I say I'm going to be doing like Team Sci Science Fiction and Fantasy, I'm going to also still kind of see if I could like get into contemporary literature and nonfiction because I got some books for that too. But we're going to try and see what we could, you know, get up in there and make happen. Also, the group book for each team, I most likely am not going to read those, but I'm going to keep them on my list, come back to them, you know, because I definitely wanted to read The Secret Lives of Baba Seiji's Wives, because that sounds juicy, that sounds like my kind of story, that sounds like mess, and I'm here for that mess. I will definitely check out the lesson by Cadwell Turnbull and see if it's something that I'll be interested in reading. And for the thrillers, I don't really have anything thriller yet. I still haven't picked up my um, Tiffany, what is it, Tiffany D. Jackson. I think she's our, our thriller queen. I will definitely be checking her out um, because a lot of her books sound amazing and I wanna get into some thriller through her. But I will definitely check check out Wife of Wife of the Gods by Quay Quarte and start getting into like any other like thriller horror novels. I'm not much of a horror person, but you know, I'm I'm trying new things, trying different things, keeping an open mind about it. So for the first prompt, Rita Woods, a character traverses a realm or heavily embodies black spirituality or black spiritualism. And for that, I was, I feel like I've already kind of read something with a character with black spirituality, and that was the stars and the blackness between them. Most of the books that I'm going into, I'm going into them without knowing much. Maybe I know a little bit of synopsis. Maybe I will know a little bit from what somebody else talked about the book that got me interested in it but I really don't know enough to know if it would have certain things that are called for the prompt. So I'm gonna go with what I could get from the synopsis and for what I think might be happening in there. So we'll see if it if it meets the prompt or not. But for that, I figured I would reread Beast Made of Night and then read Crown of Thunder because I know this is like traversing a realm and there is some like black spirituality like written into this or at least some African spirituality that is written into this story. So I am, so I'll definitely try to read the two of these. This is gonna be a hefty thing to read like two books back to back. Granted, they're like what? I think like 300 pages and it's like fantasy and it's pretty light but it's still like girl it's gonna be a lot to read and also for that I figured I could also read Excellence by Brandon Thompson Carrie Randolph and Emilio Lopez I've been longing to read this for the longest and black and I've kind of held it back now to this point for Blackathon I'm thinking this would be good because I know there is different kinds of magic and spirituality and a lot of that embedded into this book you know there's probably like voodoo and hoodoo and all that integrated into this story so I would definitely want to add that the second prompt Tate Thompson a black protagonist encounters an alien civilization or alien technology I have Rosewater by Tay Thompson, and that would probably be a really good book to read for this prompt because I believe it. I know, I know it is like futuristic Nigeria, and I think there might be some alien technology or alien like in getting in con encounter with aliens in that book, but I'm not ready to read it yet. But I figured I would read. Binti by Nnedi Okorafor. From what I read of the synopsis, it seems like it is a kind of space opera of sorts in a way. And it's a journey, it's traveling. I believe the main character, Binti, is like traveling from, I think, from my understanding, from what I've heard before, 
Binti is traveling from Earth to this university on another planet to learn about like math and a whole bunch of stuff. Although I heard it's a little heady. I'ma read it. I'ma read it. And I hope I have fun with it. I definitely believe I'll have fun with it because I've heard a lot of great things about it and I'm excited to read it. Third prompt, Octavia Butler. Time travel is a major component to the story. And for that, I will be reading Kindred, which is an Octavia Butler novel, and it definitely does have time travel. And I started reading a little bit of it, and so far I'm enjoying it. It's, ooh, it's good. But I only got a little bit in, so it's like, I'm, I'm, it's fair. I'm, I'm fair. It, I'll be reading this for February and for Blackathon. So, you know, I'll be right on time. I'll be doing what I gotta do. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm within the boundaries of what we're supposed to do. But anyway, I'll be breaking rules of these these readathons anyway. I'll be doing what I want to do anyway. But I'm, I'm trying to stick to it. I'll also be reading this for the OEB slow readathon or slow read along. I'll also be reading that because I know this is the first book that was for that slow read along. And I know I am kind of behind in the slow read along because this is the first book and I think I was like two, three months ago since they started. I think maybe four months ago they, since they started. But either way, I'm a catch up, I'm a catch up. It's a slow read along. They're taking like two, um, one book, two months time to read it and they're gonna discuss it. So I, I should be able to catch up by the time and start reading along with everyone else and I will be checking out the live show about King Kindred, and maybe I'll do a video on that. And next step for team contemporary literature and nonfiction, which I'm gonna be trying out a little bit. First prompt, Maisie Card, a book that takes place over one character's lifespan or an intergenerational nar narrative. It would have been great to have read Red at the Bone for this prompt because that is an intergenerational narrative and kind of like spans the lives of some of the characters. So I was thinking I Can't Take Jesus by Michael Arsenault or How We Fight for Our Lives by Saeed Jones since they're both memoirs or Freshwater by Akweke Amezi. I really want to read this and I think this is a good enough reason to read it. I also kind of wanted to read these memoirs too but also I'm like this feels like an intense memoir and I Can't Taste Jesus seems like a fun memoir to read. I heard it's super funny, but ooh, this font is kind of small. I don't know. Maybe Michael Arsenault's humor will get me through the small font very fast. We, I'm, we, we gonna see what I read, but I definitely want to read Freshwater, and chances are I'll try to put this in and add this to number two, Patsy. Two queer characters embark on a journey together, Bonus points if it's a tangible journey, such as a road trip. I was thinking, although technically this isn't like contemporary literature, I've been wanting to read Dead Magic Book One, The Black Veins by Aisha Monet, cause I've, just, I've heard such great things about it. I heard Aisha Monet talk about this book on Twitter and talk about like how much they wrote this book with fantasy and it's adventure and it's a, a road trip and there's like no like rom romance involved it's just like friends going on adventure and it's, it's it, I know it includes magic and it's not contemporary but it is contemporary so I'm gonna still read it and it's a road trip and it has a lot of queer characters in it from my understanding so I I'm gonna read it, you know. I, I tell you, I break the rules of these readathons when I'm ready to get what I want and do what I want. But I still kind of stay within the parameters. I'm still good for it. Although there's also the Black from Lingo or Hurricane Child. I don't know how many are taking a road trip in it, but you know, queer characters, that's another reason. Felix Ever After. Also, Magnifique Noir. Although this is like superheroes, kind of like superheroes, magical powers and a lot of saving the city. So I don't know how much of a road trip is gonna happen in here, but the Black Veins child, that's what we are going for. Number three, Nettie Okorafor, a disabled character embarks on a journey or a book by a disabled black author. I don't know necessarily all of authors' personal lives to know how much of a, what disabilities that they have but I definitely will work on seeing like any disabilities, whether it's mental disabilities, like visible disabilities or non-visible disabilities, like, like depression or maybe I believe like OCD, I believe is one. Still learning, 
We're still learning out here. I'm still learning out here. Okay. For team thriller and horror, I don't think I have any books for that. Or if I do, I don't know what they are yet. But I will definitely be looking out for any thriller or horror books for future reads. I did want to consider some other books that kind of hit the theme of travelers and traveling and taking journeys that may all that would also be great for Blackathon and just for Black History Month period. I have been looking to read The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead for a while. And this is a journey. This is a kick-ass character. Cora is like, I don't know, she's like escaping out of um, slavery. I wasn't trying to do no slavery narratives, but I've been wanting to read this for so long. And I love that is an empowered black woman who is like, like getting out, like getting out of oppression and getting rid of oppression out of her life, you know? So I am looking forward to reading this. I'm excited about this. I heard such great things about this. So I'm about to read The Underground Railroad. And this will be a great journey because I know I'm sure Cora is about to go on a journey from out of slavery into freedom and it's going to be a harrowing journey. I don't know if this might be considered a thriller because I feel like there is going to be thrill. Not necessarily in a good way, but like just the, the thrill and the anxiety of like you trying to work your way out of like this oppression and trying to get out so that you're free, you know, and all the obstacles and elements that you'll have to dodge on the way out, like all the things that you gotta do to get out, like, you know, shout out to Get Out, you know, a thriller, a masterpiece, a horror, okay? Like, but definitely like all the things that you're gonna need to do to get out of oppression. Also, I have been looking forward to reading Black AF, America's Sweetheart by Kwanzaa Sejifo and Tim Smith III for the longest. It's a short little graphic novel. I believe this is the only, this has been the only volume of this from my understanding, but I'm excited about reading this. I love the artwork. And it is a young black girl who is a superhero. And I'm excited to read it. I'm looking forward to reading this and seeing how this goes. But I really, really love the artwork. The artwork is so beautiful to me. It's like so beautiful. And in the vein of this artwork, I also have What We Don't Talk About by Charlotte Christensen, which also has similarly beautiful artwork. I am excited about reading this. This is about a young couple, an interracial couple, and it also makes me think of like Get Out because it's like I believe she's going to meet his white family and there's a possibility that I think they're racist or at least like internally racist I don't know but I'm looking forward to reading what we don't talk about because I'm assuming they don't talk about like the things that need to be talked about also to another graphic novel um The Black Mage I heard a, real, a lot of really great things about this I read the synopsis about this for the first time a little a, for a little while ago and this sounds good it sounds satirical um because the main character his name is Tom Token Tom Token, you funny. He fu they funny. Daniel Barnes, you funny. He named him Tom Token because he's like the first black mage that goes into a predominantly white like magic school. Like he's the first one. It's a minority program. I'm like, this is about to be funny. I'm looking forward to reading it. Most likely I will definitely read this as well for February because this sounds like it's going to be good. It sounds like it's going to have me laughing. And You Brought Me the Ocean by Alex Sanchez and Julie Morrow. I am looking forward to reading this one. This looks very, very... Do you see, do you see this cover? Do you see they're about to kiss? This is about to be very, very cute, very romantic. I'm going to be all... <sighs> drowning in this book and it's all about water <laughs> you know but from the synopsis that i've read so far it seems like the main character wants to leave his small town and like get out and live like go to miami and do so there's like a little journey involved in that i'm excited about this kiss because that looks like that's about to be juicy and i'm here for that this is what i need because this is what i, I want to feel something and i want to feel good and warm and then gushy you know also another book that i would have loved to read in in the vein of like traveling and travelers is midnight a gangsta love story by sister soldier because it is an immigrant story it is a story of midnight and his family moving from the sudan 
to America, to New York City, and like living in New York City and acclimating to New York City and navigating and figuring their way about around New York City. And this for me would be a reread. I haven't read this in years. I think I haven't read this in a decade. For me, it was it was a good book. It was a good read. I think the book that comes after this is really a lot of traveling from like I've gotten some spoilers and about the second book. And Midnight did, does some traveling in that book, traveling to the point that people don't believe he could actually travel like that as a, what is, what was he like, 14, 15? They didn't believe he could travel as much as he traveled in that book. I would definitely love to read this for Black History Month, for Blackathon, but you know, it's in the air, it's available. I might be able to, I might pick it up. But also, Ashley at the Bookish Realm, Deidre at Shade Tree Reads, and Erica at The Broken Spine. We read the companion novel to this, The Coldest Winter Ever by Sister Soldier, and we decided we would read Midnight, A Gangsta Love Story. So I'm thinking maybe I won't read it um, for February, but we will most likely read it like in the feet, like, sometime in the future we'll just coordinate and have like a read of this and then we'll like sit down and have a discussion a live discussion of it because i would love to read this and have another discussion about this book there are some aspects of this that i think were kind of problematic i think and i would love to revisit and see how i feel about it now compared to the decade ago when I read it, and then after reading Midnight and Nicole's entire rap, be like, <laughs> Midnight is problematic to an extent. He is a ho tap darling. He is. I definitely want to read this, and I would love to read this with Ashley and Deidre and Erica. And also, I acquired Ray Bear by Jordan Ifwiko and A Song of Rates and Ruin by Rosanna A. Brown. I am looking forward to reading these. I've heard such great things about them. I not sure I'm gonna read these this month, but I just wanted to talk about them because they're black, you know. And also the Gilded Ones is coming out in February, so I definitely wanna get that as well. So it'll be like all three of these amazing books. And I heard the Gilded Ones was really good, so add that to the list, add that to the to the collection, to the pile. I'm excited about the Gilded Ones, what's up? Like I wanna read that. It's good come on <laughs> so i'll be there for the release i think i might pre-order it i'm not one for pre-ordering i'll just let the book you know drop i don't because i don't plan on reading it immediately okay so i said i didn't want to read i didn't want too much i didn't want to have too much for my tbr for february because i i work i gotta work i'm telling you i got to work i have i have a job bitch i wish i was a city girl so i could be out here like bitch i don't got a job because I am a job. This is what I'm reading. I seem to be reading a lot. I, yes, also will be reading a lot of graphic novels. This is gonna be exciting because I definitely want to read all these graphic novels. I have a lot of like graphic novels and comic books that I need to read. I wanted to I, I wanted to get Far Sector, but well, apparently the series isn't done yet, you know? So there is no like bind up of it. I would love to get the single issues, but apparently it's shaky with getting the single issues because it's in high demand. And I don't want to get like the most recent single issues, but I still haven't gotten the first or the second issue. Like, but I want them though. Because I think I'm kind of an N.K. Jemison like fan, kind of a stan. You know, I'm I'm here for it. I love her world building, so I'm excited to read it. And the artwork for um for Far Sector looks amazing. It looks amazing to see a black woman as a superhero, as Green Lantern, in space, just being amazing. I'm excited about that. So like, I definitely want to read that. But beyond that, this is my fabulous TBR. She's doing a lot for me today. She just it's gonna be a lot so but that's all the more reason why i started kindred in the first place i started it so early started at the beginning of january because i already felt like I, i'd want to read a lot of books and i will do my best to read all these books i will do my best not to be distracted and not to be caught up on twitter it's gonna be a lot of adventures a lot of traveling to different worlds while i travel to and from work thank you for spending your time with me and i'm not this bitch like fleek